This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. On Thursday, I spoke with Charlotte Kahn's, head of photography for the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, about the Gaza Collective Photo Essay Project she has led. She asked 14 Palestinian photographers to share one image taken in the Gaza Strip over the last six months that they want the world never to forget. A warning to our TV audience, the interview features graphic images. She speaks from Paris, France. Thank you very much, Amy, for, for having me and having us and, and talking about this project, which is very um, special indeed. I think, you know, the first thing is that a couple of weeks into the war, uh, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said um, the situation is in Gaza is not just a humanitarian crisis. It's a crisis of humanity. And I think for me, for us, this is what, you know, started it all, because the assault that we're seeing on the population of Gaza is unprecedented in brutality, scope, and intensity. And the figures speak for themselves. In six months, you had over 100,000 people killed and wounded, 70% of whom are, are children and, and women. Um, you know, the, the, this staggering number as well, that the number of children killed in Gaza is higher, in six months, is higher that the number of children killed in four years of all the wars combined all around the world. You have three quarters of the population displaced, famine is imminent, law and order are breaking down, humanitarian aid is actively blocked, and on and on and on. And, you know, I think these figures are so staggering that they defy comprehension. And so for me and for us, it was really important to try to humanize these numbers, to make them real and to make them understandable. And I think it's quite paradoxical because there's been an overflow of images and stories on Gaza, uh, flooding our phones, flooding our screens, uh, you know, for six months. But somehow, somehow it is, it is not cutting across. And I could see it in my direct environment, you know, talking to friends and families. Um, I could see that people didn't really understand what was going on in Gaza. Yes, they know there's a war in Gaza, and they know that wars are, are bad and horrible. But it's one thing to, to say there's a war and it's horrible, and it's another thing to see an image of a child being pulled out from the rubble. It really hits you uh, differently. And so I think for us, it was really as the UN, as OCHA, which is the humanitarian arm of the UN, it was really important to, um, to elevate these stories coming from Palestinian photojournalists, who are the only window into what is going on in Gaza, because as you know, international foreign journalists have been banned of entering Gaza independently. None of them have, except from Clarissa Ward, who went in for like two hours at the end of uh, sometime in December. So Palestinian photojournalists are the only ones, are the only window into the suffering of people in Gaza. And so it was really important for us to go to them and to, to try to share and elevate again the, the incredible, tragic testimonies that they are reporting and covering day in, day out for the last six months. So, Charlotte Kanz, can you talk about how you reached out to Palestinian photojournalists? Yeah, that's a really good question, because it's been incredibly difficult. Um, it's been a process that has been going on for weeks. It took us over three months to put this project together. And, um, you know, as you know, the communications have been really, really difficult with Gaza. I think, you know, it got better recently, but, you know, in December, January, up until February, there were like constant blackouts. So it was, it was hard to get a hold of people and you would get a hold of someone and then the person would not be responding for days on end. And suddenly you had, you know, an answer and they were like, yes, I'm really happy to participate. I will send you images and then nothing again for a couple of days. So it was this constant back and forth. And I just want to say here that, you know, the way we made it happen also has been through um, an incredible photojournalist uh, called Tania Habjuka, who's been based in um, Jerusalem, Ramallah, for the past 25 years. Um, Tania is an award-winning photojournalist. She knows the country and the, the region inside out. And she had an incredible network of, um, of you know, colleagues, uh, Palestinian colleagues. And so through Tanya as well, we were really able to reach out to a number of them, bring them on board. And, you know, it was a combination of, again, her network, word of mouth. Um, and also, Amy, to be honest, you know, 
they, they are they are being killed also Palestinian photojournalists so there, there are not that many of them left in Gaza to be to be honest and and this is tragic so introduce us to some of the photographs that are in this collection okay so I think um, let me actually if I, I'm just taking it in front of me I think you know there's one photo for me that hits me really hard it's the photo of um, from photographer Jihad Al Frafi. Jihad is a 22 year old um, Palestinian photographer from Gaza. And he took this image of Ibrahim, who's a 12 year old um, boy, like any other boy in the world, um, who had his arm amputated because of um, his injuries in the last six months. And we can see him on the image uh, trying to brush his teeth. And he's holding uh, the toothbrush with his mouth and the, the paste, the, tooth, the, the toothpaste in his left hand. And he's, he's trying to do something as simple as brushing his teeth. And, and you can see in this image how difficult it is and how his life has been turned upside down. And I think, you know, with the number of children killed in Gaza and wounded, and I think, again, this is pretty unprecedented compared to other conflicts and wars around the world. Um, you know, and, and when we say, I think it's Save the Children had this um, terrible statistic a few months ago, which was that 10 children per day on average have lost an arm or a limb uh, in the war. And when you, when you see that, when you see Ibrahim trying to brush his teeth, you understand what that means. It's his life has, his life has been shattered. But it's not just his life, it's his family's life as well, because he will need a caregiver for years to come. So again, it's like, you know, through the war, it's entire families who are being affected. And I think this, this image really uh, hits, you know, very hard to me. Charlotte, introduce us to Bilal Khaled and his picture. Yeah, so Bilal is, um, is a very interesting, uh, you know, um, character and person. He's he used to be a calligraphy artist, and he is still a calligraphy artist, but he was, you know, making a living as a calligraphy artist also before the war. He's also a photojournalist. He's an incredible photographer. His images are stunningly tragic very often. Um, there's a couple of images of him in the project. One of them is of a little boy um, who is um, Amy, the color of ashes. He's uh, sitting on a hospital bed crying and there's blood, you know, dripping uh, along his face. And um, Bilal in the text that accompanies the photo, because that's something very special to this project. It's not just the images, it's the, it's the personal text that the photographers have shared to accompany the images, where they explain their emotions and the backstory to the image and what the story means to them. And Bilal has these words with this image. He says that this child, when he got to hospital, was crying for his bicycle. And he kept saying that he wanted his bicycle. He wanted his bicycle, not having fully comprehended what had just you know, hit him. Um, so this is a really strong image. And another one from Bilal, which is, which is incredibly strong as well, where you see a family. Um, and I think this is very special because in, in many images that we've seen on Gaza, quite often it's one parent or the other with, with their dead child. But in this image, you see the entire family. You see the mother, you see the father, you see the, the brother, and you see the, this dead child in their arms. And, and their, their grief and their suffering is, um, is so raw um, in this image. Um, it's, it's, it's incredibly strong. I wanted to read the quote that Bilal Khalid sent. He said, a Palestinian child was carried to Al Nasser Hospital, pulled out from the rubble. At the hospital, his aunt recognized him and started screaming his name. This is Dia. This is Dia. When his siblings, mother and father arrived, their pain was unforgettable. He'd left their home to get some wood for heat when he was killed in an airstrike. The yeah. family forms a cocoon around his shrouded, small body. Tell us about the photographer Jahan Kowera. So Jahan is a young uh, female photographer. Uh, there's a couple of them in the project. Uh, we have three female photographers represented with Jahan, uh, Mariam Abu Dagga and uh, Samar uh, Abu Elouf. Um, so there's three of them. Jahan has this 
poignant image of um, a young girl uh, who's lying on a hospital floor. Um, it's a very graphic image. It's, a, it's, it's very hard. You can see um, the hands of a health um, specialist trying to you know, fix something, her drip or, or whatever that is. But what is striking in this image is that um, she's got her right hand lying on the floor and in her right hand, there's a piece of candy. And it's this you know, typical candy that kids in many different places of the world eat that is very recognizable. And seeing this young girl, this, she's probably six or seven, no more, lying on the floor with a piece of candy in her hand, and the quote again of Jehan is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And, and I have it in front of me, actually, Amy, I don't know if I can read it to you, um, but she says that she could not hold herself up when she saw this little girl gasping for breath and that the piece of candy still stuck in her hand, stained with blood. She will never forget when she was carried to the mortuary. And she says here, the candy fell at my feet on the blood soaked ground. And again, I think what is so strong with this project, again, is that these images hit you because they make this suffering so relatable. Um, these are not just random kids. When you recognize the piece of candy in her hand, you can see all the kids that you know, your own kids, your nephews, your nieces, and, and that makes it, again, uh, particularly strong. Can you tell us about Sahar al -Ghora? Yes, so Sahar, um, has an incredible uh, image in the project where you see um, a dad, uh, it's in a white tent, um, screaming. And the dad is in a bit of a hallucinatory state, as he says himself in his text. And um, right next to him, lying on the floor, is uh, the body of his dead child, um, covered uh, by a white uh, cloth. And um, Sahir has been uh, documenting the war for the last six months for many different outlets. Um, he's a really strong photographer. He just won Picture of the Year, actually, um, uh, for his work. Um, and and again, his you know this image is the, the suffering is so raw and so it, yeah, it's just it just hits you you know directly. It just stabs you in the heart, really, Amy. And then there's Mahmoud Hamps. Uh, I'm, it's similar, um, but different. He says, Mohammed El Alul is a cameraman for Anadolu News Agency. He is my friend. We spend a lot of time together, and we also often cover the war together. Four of his children were killed in an airstrike, his wife severely injured. When he heard what happened to his family, it was early morning. We were together at the hospital. We went to the morgue at al -Aqsa. I knew his children. All I could do was to be there with him, crying. Yeah, absolutely. Mahmoud is, um, is a photographer for AFP, Agence France Presse, um, who's been covering uh, 30 years of war in Gaza. And um, I think this image is, is, is it's very strong, as you say, Amy, because it, it talks about, you know, the fact that, again, these Palestinian photojournalists are being um, killed in this war. And they are not just witnesses. They are victims as well, whether they are being killed or wounded or whether they are being displaced with their families. And this, again, makes it um, very, um, very special in, you know, what we're seeing unfolding in Gaza right now. And what you know of Mohammed El Alul, the cameraman who lost his ch children. He's so, wearing, um, of course, he's wearing the uh, press vest. Yeah, exactly. And I think in this, um, in this incident where his, uh, the house where he was staying in got uh, targeted uh, by an airstrike, uh, he lost three of his children uh, and his brother uh, on the strike. Um, so, again, it's, we're talking about entire families being decimated. And Anadolu News Agency, where is it? So, Anadolu is a Turkish um, news agency. Uh, it's, it's one of the big, you know, news agencies, uh, again, um, based, headquartered in Turkey. Tell us about Mohamed Zanun. Um, so, Mohamed Zanun is also one of the, you know, main photojournalists who's been reporting on this war, um, you know, since the beginning. He's working for several uh, news agencies. He's working, in, you know, he's been working for Al Jazeera. He's been working for Le Monde. He's been working for, for, for a couple of others. 
um, his images uh, are all very striking. There's there's a couple in the project. There's one of uh, where you can only see um, the feet of a child, and you only see that it's tiny feet in the photo. You don't know who it is. Um, completely buried under uh, the rubble. And Mohammed has this uh, caption which says, the child's feet were all that were visible from the rubble. The little girl was killed along with three of her brothers by an Israeli airstrike in Han Yunis market. The mother, she lived, but she was hopeful for hours that they would be pulled out alive by the paramedics from the rubble where her home once stood. And I think this photo is, is, um, is incredible, Amy, as well, because, you know, it's probably, again, when people have seen them, it, it's one which really stayed with them. It's, 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 it's graphic in a way, but it's, it's not graphic in another. But the emotion that you have when you see this image again uh, you know, very strong, and 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 it makes you understand again what we were talking about before. What what does this war look like day in day out for people and families and children in Gaza? You know, seeing a child's feet under the rubble, you know, again makes you understand the war quite differently uh, than just reading about it. Charlotte Cannes, head of photography for OCHA, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. She coordinated the Gaza Collective Photo Essay Project. Charlotte said, these are not just photojournalists. These are also civilians. They're witnesses and victims to the horrible conflict that we're seeing unfolding in front of our eyes. We particularly thank Charlotte for this interview. She was in Paris after the passing of her mother this week. And that does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is currently accepting applications for our digital fellowship. Learn more and apply at democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is produced with Renee Faust, Mike Burke, Dean Augusta, Shurf, Dokadus, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Maria Tarasain, Tammy Warren, Afterina, Nadura, Sam Alcoff, Tim Riaspi, Joe John Hamilton, Rabbi Karen, Honey Masood. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.